All right, guys, welcome back to another week of Striper Migration Reports from On The Water. My name is Matt Hefner. I'm the assistant editor here at On The Water magazine, and uh, we're going to get into it real quick. We're just going to give you guys a brief rundown of what happened last week in our Striper Migration Report. Um, so we had Alex Perez from Angler Sports Center in Annapolis, Maryland. Um, he talked a little bit about what striper fishing has looked like up until the closure in Chesapeake Bay on April 1st. Um, and what anglers can expect the bite to look like once the closure ends and the fishery reopens on May 15th inside Chesapeake Bay. Following up after Alex, we spoke to Captain Brett Taylor of Real Reaction Sport Fishing out of Waretown, New Jersey. And Brett discussed early season striper strategies from the backwaters to the beaches, as well as uh, noting the importance of bunker and keeping large stripers around New Jersey during the spring migration. Um, Brett also mentioned that there was a fast moving body of migratory fish ranging from 35 to 40 inches um, that were heading up the Jersey coast. And that holds true for what our guests will talk about this week as well. Um, we've got some fish moving up the coast, uh, light stuff hitting portions of the Western Long Island Sound and the shores of Connecticut, as well as the Northern reaches of Jersey. So we're gonna get into all that a little bit this week with our guests. Going off of that, it sounds like that same wave of stripers that Brett Taylor was talking about last week has made their way up into the Western Long Island Sound, or at least a portion of them have. Um, we're seeing migratory lysed up um, fish, meaning they have sea lice on their tails and on their bodies um, in portions of the Western Long Island Sound. So Connecticut surf casters that have been plugging in and uh, throwing jigs up in the rivers. There's actually some fresh fish apparently out on the Western Connecticut beaches. Um, and that goes for the North Shore of Long Island as well. Now, it may not be a massive school of migratory bass, but it's the first sign of migratory fish north of New Jersey so far this year. So we're hoping that these nor'easter conditions don't uh, delay the migration any further. But we're gonna leave that area alone for this week. Um, while the fishing continues to heat up in the Long Island Sound, we're instead going to check on Northern and Southern Central New Jersey this week by talking to a couple of the tackle shops down there. All right, guys, so our first guest this week is a tackle shop owner and big time innovator when it comes to turning productive freshwater baits into saltwater baits, whether that be flutter spoons or glide baits. Please welcome Mike Leeson of Tack Waterman in Long Branch, New Jersey. Mike, what's going on, man? Not much. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. We uh, we we touched base a little bit while we were down in um, the Edison Saltwater Fishing Show, and we were kind of the striper season was kind of just kicking off. Obviously, a lot has changed since we initially touched base back down in Edison um, in the beginning or mid March, um, and now we're in the first week of April. And you know, as as predictable as stripers tend to be in their spring patterns, um, what if anything has been different about the spring migration so far for anglers in North Jersey this year? Uh, I think. I think with all this rain and weather has been been hurting us. Um, it seems like we're we're a little bit behind the last few springs. Okay. Um, there has been fish around for a while, and some migratory fish around. It's just they haven't been able to like set up as well, um, especially locally. Um, it's just. You, you get a little bit of normal weather and then all of a sudden we get two, three inches of rain or whatever it is, how much rain. Um, so it's definitely been, uh, been hurting us in that aspect. Yeah. And the rain, I mean, that's going to throw off the water temperatures and stuff. So. Yeah. The Brown, the Brown water too is not helping anything. Um, right. so that's been really tough, but, uh, and size has been behind a little bit, at least for me, you know, we're on some teener fish, but in the last few years, the last week of March, we're on 20, 20 pound class fish right right and and so i mean um, that's got to have something to do with the amount of bunker in the area too right i know last year like it started off hot and heavy with a lot of bunker in raritan bay and, and that area so has, has there been the same amount of bunker around this year or are you guys kind of like lacking that right now it's not we had bunker push like early on again yeah. like they pushed in and there was flooded flooded our rivers flooded the bay and then i think with all this rain it's really kind of dispersed everything out yeah um it seems like, you know, there's definitely a lot of bait still around. It's just more scattered. Okay. Well, like you said, it seems like some migratory fish have been moving into the area. I know last week we talked to Captain Brett Taylor, who's down in the Waretown, so central South Jersey area. Um, and he was talking about some 37-inch fish that had kind of moved into the area. Um, and we even this week, I heard that there were some migratory fish that uh, might have moved into the western Long Island Sound. So um, based on... Just going off of that and what we know about, you know, the early wave of migratory fish that have kind of moved up the coast, what class of fish are you seeing in your area? Um, you mentioned you were lacking like those 20 pounders, but based on years past, like what does the migration typically look like 
for anglers in North Jersey beyond the second week of April? Oh, it should be good. It it should be consistent 15 to 30 pound class fish. Okay. Uh, with with shots at some real ones. You know, guys will pick some 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 real big ones. Yeah. Um, but like your average size fish, you know, 15, 25 pounds, um, at least in the bay and stuff like that. And then you guys, like I said, you got shot guys getting shots at some real ones. Okay. Um, but yeah, the, it, it, I think with this moon coming in the new moon, yeah. I think, um, you know, every day you look at the ocean, that's not rough. There's gannets, there's, there's migratory birds constantly moving and, and diving. So there's just been waves and waves. And then we've had, I mean, shoot up like as early as three weeks ago, we had fish with sea lice on it. Okay. Um, Good to know. And that was like that. Yeah, that was that first, that first shot of him. Yeah. And the rest is like you know that early or late, early March, mid March is you know a lot of that holdover fish. Right. Right. It'd be interesting so, to know what, what, like where, where those fish came from, those early migrators, whether they came right out of the Chesapeake or if they're kind of you know coming out of the Delaware Bay and hooking a quick turn up the coast. Yeah, I don't. I I wish I knew. <laughs> yeah. But, no, uh, right. Um. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think there's so much to this fishery that, that we don't know about. And I think people fishing, more people fishing, we're learning more as it goes on. Mm. Um, and it seems like our, our holdover fishery has just gotten a lot better uh, with fish going up and just up rivers and just really staying over more. Yeah. Um, and better class of them doing that, too. Right. And you guys are in such close proximity to the Hudson. So I'd imagine that's a lot of those fish kind of like trickling out of the Hudson and the East River where they kind of hold up for the winter and, and just kind of yeah. putting on the feedback before they maybe run up the coast or run right up the river. Yeah, exactly. And, th and that seems to be the best of it. When we get when we get those fish coming out and we get the migratories, when when those when those collide, that seems to be the, that's a really fun bite. So when does that kind of kick off for you guys? Is that what we were talking about? Kind of like second, third week of April? Yeah, right. Right now, it it should be like I said. Though I mean, what we're looking at, we we're, we got another nor'easter going now. It's been. Yeah. I was out yesterday. It was driving sideways, rain, water's muddy. Which, if the fish are set up in the bay, it, it will push more back in. But it just hasn't. There hasn't been enough time between these storms to let them settle out and really get onto a pattern. For sure. But, yeah, it's been the same or, way up here. Yeah, or it just hasn't let them get off the bottom. Like you, you see, like all oh, my buddies have been going out. The marks are incredible, and they're catching them good, and they have been. But it's it's not letting them come off the bottom. Okay, okay. So a lot more jigging and stuff like that, rather than throwing the plugs around. Yeah, it's been or like deep diving metal lips have been working. Yeah. Um, but NLBNs, tsunami shads, uh, straight tails, more stuff that you could bounce bottom and, and right. kind of drag. You know? Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Well, and brighter color, and brighter colors. What's that? And, and brighter colors. You know. Oh right. right. Well, I mean, you got that stained water, especially with all that extra runoff from the rain. It's got to You got to go bright, right? Yeah. Cool. So, I, I mean, you mentioned that um, you know some of those deep diving metal lips and stuff are working, and uh, but but earlier this week you sent me a photo of uh, like a solid stripe uh, striper on a largemouth bass style glide bait, which is a technique that you seem to have pretty dialed in. Uh, it's something Jimmy actually wrote about and used uh, a couple of your photos in a couple of years back in one of his from the surf columns. But I'd imagine once the bunker really move in and those fish do have a moment to set up, like you were talking about, um, that the stripers will be even more willing to swipe at a large plug like that. So what areas or conditions do you look for to fish big glide baits successfully during the spring? Um, shallow, any of the flats, the flats, you could catch them in deep water. Don't get me wrong when they're singling bunker out, stuff like that. But as far as like surf casting or when I'm in my little boat, it's any kind of flat where and and there's bunker around, um, that bait seems to shine. It's just yeah. such a natural presentation. I mean, you glide bait fish for freshwater. Right. When they eat it, they you know, it's just such a natural eat. Um and and I do catch them during the day, but nighttime. Nighttime just crawl on that thing, you know, foot underneath the surface, you know, between two to ten feet of water. Okay. Um, so a lot of the Bay Shore is great for it. Our river systems work well for it. Um, but yeah, anytime a little bit moving water on a flat, a point, and adult bunker are, are around that bait, you know, it's the first first bait I go to for sure. 
Okay. And, and so what, like you, you mentioned uh, something about the mud flats. So obviously those, you like fishing it at night because those, those fish kind of move onto the flats at night after the sun has kind of warmed up the mud flats a little bit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, if I'm surf casting, that's, you know, obviously where we could get to, right. Yeah. You know, anywhere you could wade. Um, it's at first it was a little intimidating, not intimidating, but it's like, at least coming from my background of, of throwing them for fresh water, you know, I'm used to throwing heavy baits. So just adjusting my equipment to that, um, you know, at first it's like, you're a little, it's, you know, throwing a 10 inch bait, five ounce bait, but man, you, you get a reaction, you, you know, pretty, pretty quick that they're going to, they're going to eat it. Yeah, absolutely. And so when do, when do you personally shift from going to, you know, targeting those mud flats with glide baits? to fishing out front in the surf? Oh, that's going to be a while. I mean, right now it's, I mean, I'm sure you can go catch them in, in the surf, but uh, God, it's over the years, you, you kind of, you know, just like anybody else, you pattern your area and stuff like that. And um, all those fish are coming in. They're they're constantly going to be coming in, going up rivers and stuff like that. So, you know, you try to collide with them that way. Um, Surf-wise, it would be more May, June. Okay, gotcha. Cool. You know, when, when we start getting those, those Chesapeake fish coming up, stuff like that, or, or fish set up out front, but right now, like everything's coming into the bay, into the river. So realistically for the next six, eight weeks, we'll be fishing backwater stuff, you know? Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I remember last year, Jimmy actually went down and, and stuck like his personal best large mouth, uh, large mouth, uh, personal best striper with uh captain, Rob Radloff. Um, and that was, I think the first or second week of May. So hopefully that's, that's going to yeah. line up for you guys again this year. Cause those were some, you know, 50 to 60 pound class fish. Yeah. Those, those fish are units, man. And they are the angriest. Yeah. Right. Well, those are those big Chesapeake feeders that have just marched yeah. up the coast and they're just, they're just looking for big bunker. God, those things are so fun. That bite is just out of control. It's uh they absolutely destroy the clubs. <laughs> like they, you'll come back, your lips are flat. Um, Shoot, I don't even know if I have one over here. We ended up starting going to like tuna graded hooks because we're straightening hooks out. But you'll come back, your hooks are broke. It's it's wild how 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 aggressive those ones are. Awesome. Well, we'll have to keep an eye on the migration in Jersey and maybe check back in around you know second first or second week of May and see what's going on with those uh those big breeders that came up from the Chesapeake. So, um, Mike, I appreciate you jumping on and kind of filling us in on what's going to happen over the next two weeks and. Uh, talking a little bit of uh, the techniques you use on the mud flats and stuff. Really appreciate it, man. No worries. Thank you for the call. I appreciate it. Yeah, anytime, man. All right, so we're going to scoot down the Striper Coast a few dozen miles now. Our next guest this week is an employee at Creekside Outfitters in Waretown, New Jersey. He has been a contributing writer for On the Water magazine over the years. He also contributes to our weekly Southern New Jersey fishing reports on behalf of the shop. Please welcome Tom P. Tom, how you doing? Matt, good to see you. Long time no meet. What's up? <laughs> Not much, man. We I know have we Fast, Matt. We have that fast and more and more moving on. I'm doing the question, buddy. I'm ready. All right, cool. So question number one was, uh, it was actually somebody you mentioned that you're going to be fishing with at the end of this month. But uh, last week we spoke to Captain Brett Taylor, who runs Real Reaction Sport Fishing, as you know. Yep. And he mentioned some migratory fish up to 37 inches had filed in. So over the next week or two, what do you expect to see in terms of striper numbers and size class for the central southern New Jersey area? A big bust of numbers coming up. There's going to be fish well over 40 inches. Uh, they're in, there's loads of them up in the Delaware River with shad fishing the other day, actually, Easter Sunday. We're marking stripers everywhere. They were rolling. They were catching them in Delaware Bay, Cape May, all the way up. They're moving in. Okay. More and bigger fish are moving in. Next week and a half, two weeks, all hell should break loose. Now, don't forget, we have these resident fish in the back. And so far as size-wise, we call them residents because they're not going to be 40 inches in the back. So, you know, you have that big migratory push coming up out front. Gotcha. Okay. And that that's perfect because I was, one of my other questions was, you know, you mentioned you were shad fishing in the Delaware Bay. So based on years past, when do you anticipate that some of those large breeders will drop out of the Delaware uh, River? And when does and does that typically ignite the surf bite out front for you guys? That you know, that that helps kick it off. It's one of the catalysts, you know, water temperature, daylight, and then the forage. There's bunker everywhere. Okay, so there's bunker coming up. But those fish will start to drop out. We catch them up until about the second week in May. And then they're moving down. Gotcha. So it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be mayhem. But yeah, I'm telling you, two, three weeks, it's, it's going to be great. Plenty of fish out there. Okay. But you have to be fishing. Now, we have two straight days of rain. You can't catch fish if you're not on the water. Uh, unintended. So here, uh, there's no migratory fish yet. There's no big ones. 
because they're not catching them doesn't mean they're not there. Look what's right. happening in North Jersey. They're getting them up out of Manitowoc. Yep. Sorry, that's my Italian coming out of my hands. Because... <laughs> oh, that's that's quite all right. You're very passionate about it. I like it. So when they do come out into the surf, are you guys, do you find that, like, typically in South Jersey, is it more of a plug bite or is it guys soaking clams? Because I know you mentioned a lot, like, clams are a big bait down there. Clams, uh, preferably fresh clams. Uh, guys who use worms in the surf, like, I'm, I, I prefer a good old nice big sandworm. I'm a sandworm guy. I'm originally from North Jersey. Other guys swear by bloods, but in high low rig them, a fish finder rig. Again, the mandatory inline circle hook. People don't forget that. They're going to nail you this year. And, um, and the bass are there, but again, they're catching them on plugs as well. Water warms it up a little bit. You have herring here, you have bunker here, you have spearing coming out. It's a smorgasbord. Right. And it's going to just, it's going to build and build and all hell's going to break. Now in the back, I'm loving, I'm loving. That's where we go with Captain Brett, by the way. It's Captain Brett. He takes him tailor. He's always taking a <laughs> fish. Honor it, release. But again, yeah. we pop like crazy back there. Small little, small little twitch baits, crank baits like this. It's, it's just, it's just a cornucopia. It's, it's crazy fishing. That's great. Um, and so one of my other questions was, and, and you were, because you're going out with Brett is, you know, I know you guys sell a fair amount of blood worms throughout the month of March or sand worms as well. Mm -hmm. But what, like, are, are those, are top waters pretty much the way that you approach backwater fishing or like, what are some of the popular lures that the shop starts to I'm set? I'm a top water guy in the back, uh, poppers, you know, snack and juniors, that type of thing. But a cool way to catch them, it goes back to my freshwater antecedents, get a cigar float. Uh, can I get a cigar float? Ooh, hold on. Cigar float style like this, about 18 inches down, predicated on depth, outgoing, out, it's always towards evening. Get yourself a bloodworm like that or a sandworm underneath. Bob it and just follow it, follow it as it drifts out. You'll see bass will pull, especially around the current breaks and stuff at the ends of the sedge islands. Mm -hmm. You'll see that bobber go, woo! And, and you're on, man. You are on. Just remember with the circle hook, don't yank like I still do. Just tighten and they're there. Remember, they don't hesitate when you show them live bait. Oh, absolutely. And so going off that live bait note, you mentioned you're more of a sandworm guy than a bloodworm guy. Is that why is that? One, they're less expensive. I like that. <laughs> there you go. And two, they're meteor. They they seem to uh, have more life to them. Okay. And 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 they're 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 just crazy crazy animals, man. They're crazy worms. Blood worms. You look at them the wrong way. Sometimes like peanut bunker and they die. They had yeah. nothing there. Right. So uh, I'm sorry. Well, I was. And they're here. And plus, yeah, that's right. Got the same in the The thing too. Now the guys boil up bloods and they do well with them. I fish more sands. I do well with that. So those are my proclivities. No okay. arguing about the sand, about the blood worms. But then again, especially if you're using blood worms in the back, like in the Mullica River, places like that, then you got the white perch jamming on. Yeah. So that can get real expensive real fast. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, those white perch are voracious, have voracious appetites. We know that very well. Mm -hmm. So, Tom, is most of your personal striper fishing done in the backwaters, like throughout the month of April? Or do you kind of like pl plug through the inlets and stuff? 90 90 percent in the back okay and, right, well, and, working along the set working along the sedge island i'll get up towards the like for example towards the uh, barnegat inlet in case okay. you're alone at south jesse anyway but then you're beefing up and tackle going heavier i like the light stuff especially more the fish uh maybe rather especially the fish are aggressive they may not be the biggest but they're little gang bangers man they're all over the poppers all over the twitch base all over the paddle tails Oh yeah, those you get, you get some, like voodoo paddle tails, some of those new paddle tails, they kick ass. I'm sorry, they catch fish. <laughs> that's that's quite all right. Like we said, you're very passionate about this. And it seems to be uh the pearl and like the pearl and black top, sometimes blue, but pearl seems like the overall color. You know, you always hear the term it ain't no use if it ain't chartreuse. Pearl gets the swirl, man. There you go. I like that. I've never heard that one before. I'll have to use that. Pearl, yeah, Pearl White. Yeah, one I'm, of my yeah, I'm, folks. I'm fishing with Tom B. I'm fishing with Tom B. It's a whole <laughs> I'll different have to make it. I'll have to, yeah, I'll have to do it. I'll have to cut out some time this spring, maybe. Um, all right. So last Come question. Come on now. <laughs> last question for you would be um have you guys seen, have you personally seen, I should say, um, uh, any migratory fish in your area? Me personally, no. But I've seen uh some legit photos from legit people. Okay. They're not. They're not. They're not. They're not the uh, social media warriors, heroes, and all that. These are fishermen that don't. They don't share much of anything. Right. They you come know, into the shop they, and they, that's they about keep it. What they're yeah. doing. That's it. They're not very 
talking. If they're not friendly, but they're not unfriendly. They just give you information and away they go. Uh, I've seen some classic pictures, hey, 40, 40, 41, 40. Exactly. That's the stereotype. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Tom, thanks a lot for jumping on. I really appreciate it and really enjoy your enthusiasm around the striped bass fishery. I think uh, a lot of people are feeling a, a little bit antsy and you definitely just put uh, a little bit of adrenaline in my veins. So I'm looking forward Listen, to can, can, I, can I throw a reminder in there? When they're going to be, when they're going to be uh, available sometime in May, and especially if you like to eat stripers as much as I do, get the bonus tag. That entitles yeah. you one fish 24 to under 28 inches. You don't have to catch the larger slot fish first. And it gives you a chance to bring something home for dinner. That may be a bad word to some of the really hardcore striper guys, but strippers are fish that catch and eat as well. Yeah, and so you guys have that bonus program because you you forego the commercial fishery, right? Right, and that's that's through NJ uh, Fish and Wildlife, the Marine Grove Marine Fisheries there in Naco Creek. You, you mail it in, you send it on the computer, whatever, and they send you a tag. Just make sure you fill out, you know, do the necessary data and send it back. But it entitles you to a, a fish, and it's just a lot of fun. And it's something, a little incentive. And I can bring home a striper for dinner. There you go. Exactly. It makes it a little worthwhile. You know, that extra cast might produce an extra fish. You never know. Absolutely right. I like the way you think. I like the way you think. Oh, we get along just fine, Tom. <laughs> okay, man. Nice awesome. meeting you. Yeah, likewise. Thanks for jumping on. I appreciate it. See you next year at the shows if you don't come here this spring. Oh, that sounds good. I'll definitely be at the shows and I'm going to try to make it a, a, a thing to get down. If not this spring, definitely this fall run. So and remember, come here and you'll be part of Living Life Creekside. Perfect. We love, we live for it. We love it. This is what we do. Awesome. Well, give my best to Liza. Thanks to you guys and uh, best of luck during the rest of the spring run. Catch you, man. Be good. Take care. So regarding what we heard from Tom P at Creekside, it sounds like the best is still yet to come for Central and Southern Jersey. Big stripers to 40 inches and over are staged up in the Delaware River. Herring are running Jersey's rivers. And according to Tom, there are acres upon acres of bunker migrating up the coast around Cape May. Whether they'll stop off in Southern Jersey or join their relatives up in the Raring Bay area, we don't know, but we have to imagine that there are some quality bass in tow. Unfortunately though, that's all the time we have for this week. Thanks again to our guest, Tom P of Creekside Outfitters and Mike Gleason of Tack Waterman. Fishing has been good in New Jersey this spring, but based on what we heard from those guys, the bite is really about to take off. Check back next week for more updates on the spring striper migration. And in the meantime, check out on the water striper cup. It's a 20 week catch and release based stripe bass tournament and you can win weekly prizes from Yeti, Penn, Bubba, and Costa sunglasses by submitting photos of your catch each week on stripercup.com. Thanks again for watching. We'll catch you again next week for another striper migration report from On the Water.